Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you were watching the channel yesterday, you know that there is a Steam sale currently going on. If you did not know that, check out yesterday's video and see what is up for sale that's of interest to game developers. And in the comments, the one thing that really drew the most interest was Shadron. Now, Shadron is a very simple tool for the most part that does something very cool. And enough of you wanted me to check it out, I went ahead and bought it, spent a couple hours hands-on with it, and now I'm going to share my experiences here with you guys. So if you are interested in Shadron, hopefully this quick video will help you have a slightly better understanding of exactly what this application is all about. Now, first things first, you can download Shadron at um, Steam right now. You can see here at 75%, or sorry, 25% off. Not a huge sale by any stretch of the word. There are some things currently like 85% off, but this is the biggest sale I have seen for Shadron yet. So if you're looking at picking it up, you can save about 25% right now. Also, if you don't care about the sale price, you can buy it at Shadron's website. Uh, also for, keep in mind, that's USD. That's Canadian dollars. So this would be more like 10 or $11 US right now. Um, but if you buy it at full price off Shadron.com, it is available outside of Steam. Double-edged sword there. Um, that means no DRM, so no requirement to run Steam in the background. But you also can't register it in Steam to run. So it's out, if you want to keep all your stuff all together in Steam, you're going to have to buy it from Steam. So that is Shadron. Let's take a quick look exactly what it does or what it's all about, to be honest. This is a graphic editor for programmers. So basically what they're trying to do is enable you to write GLSL shaders to create art dynamically that you can then save to an image. But I think what the majority of you would probably use for is a GLSL sandbox. So if you want to learn shader programming, um, Shadron actually makes it a bit easier, a bit more accessible. And this is Shadron running. Not the most exciting thing you've ever seen in your life. Pretty straightforward, but this is Shadron. Um, you might think, okay, there's got to be more to it than that. And yes, there is. So we're going to click this little question mark button. And here is the Shadron help. And you'll scroll on down here and you will see these are the interfaces. So the main, main program window is what we are looking at right now. This is the main program window. An object window is secondary windows that uh, spit out results. We'll see that in a second. But you can do things like um, toggle the... Um, uh, green, alpha, red, blue channels. It's no blue. Weird. I think that's just an oversight. Um, oh, wait, no, that's not colors. Sorry, my bad. Uh, you can open up scripts on the fly. You can pause uh, animations on the fly, etc. So let's actually look at this thing in action. So you see here, control plus O allows you to open a script and we'll do that. And I've actually already gone. There's a bunch of example scripts already built in. And that's what we can do now. We can select any one of these scripts. So let's do... Um, Let's do winter. It's a particle system end result. So now what you see here is a couple of inputs, like so, and an output, and then a bunch of parameters. So you see here we've got the crystal, a cock curve, I didn't say that one, uh, and a snowflake. And you see they're being generated and used over here. And then we've got a bunch of different toggles we can use. Now this one is obviously controlling uh, the Mandelbrot set that's being used to calculate the, the ultimate um, snowflakes that we're using here, the end result of them. We can change up the shape of them, but you see it's all being readapted on the fly. At the same time, we can change the wind in our simulation, so we're blowing it across a little bit more, uh, how depth works, have it closer or further away, etc. So you've got all of these things interacting at the same time. Now let's look at how this is actually happening. So let's open up that script, uh, this guy right here. So here in Shadron, this is one of the examples we just opened up, and this is our winter shader. Now, what I've done is I've associated the Shadron extension to Visual Studio Code, and I installed the GLSL sample. So you'll see my code is being indexed as GLSL down here. Now you'll notice this is kind of, it's basically a superset of the GLSL shader language. In fact, anything you see parameterized like this, so GL, GLSL and the followed by a function, everything within this function is just straight up GLSL code. But at the same time, there are some uh, convenience methods like this model here. Those are for, um, and basically making it easier for you to work with. Uh, they're providing functionality that isn't there. So if you want to bring in a model or other functionality like that, we'll look at what is available in a second. Uh, but there are some extensions, same here, like particle system. That's an extension that Shadron has made available to you just to simplify this process. So you're also going to run into a catch though. When you start depending on that stuff, you may not necessarily be able to run your GLSL shaders. Ditto for um, every single shader program or host, like so 
for example, a Shade or Toy website, it provides a certain level of functionality to you, a bunch of inputs and outputs that your shaders can work with. And Shadron is no different. The only problem is when you go to a different host, so say you go to Unity, you either need to change that code or you have to provide those inputs to your shader. Um, but all right, so without further ado, here is the code that is generating. This is a very complex one. I'll go to a simpler one in a second to explain the, um, the actual end result. But we'll see up here, you'll see parameters are being defined. Everything tagged with a parameter. You can see then you can interact with over here. Parameters can be um, built in GLSL types. Um, and then next up, you saw that we've got these uh, structures being, so this cock curve, crystal, and snowflake inputs. Those will be all shown So there our model image cock curve, and then we'll have another model image crystal and image snowflake. And we can actually um, superimpose or change, well, in this case, they're dynamically created. I'll show you in another example how those can be uh, changed up. But if I actually change any of the code here, uh, it will immediately update on here. Um, so here, let's show you a different, a smaller, simpler example. We'll go with uh, diamonds. So to load a new one, you can literally just drag and drop the code over here. Or another thing I can actually do is I can take the code straight out. So I'll just copy it and paste it. So here, let's go to something different. Oh, I'm loading it on the wrong thing. Okay, let's try that again. So here is a Julia fractal set being generated example. So now what I've done is here, say I, I wrote some shader code, I wanna test it out. I can just straight out, just copy, load up the main window and paste. And it's already gonna figure out all of my parameters, et cetera, that we can go ahead and tweak them. Um, or again, we could have just loaded it straight up using file. But if you're just working from code, um, you can literally just paste code onto the window and it will evaluate it in real time. So if I'd gone and uh, made a mild, mild change here, so let's change our diamond size default up to, uh, I don't know, that much, paste. So control C, grab it, control V, there, you see immediately the results come in. Now, another thing we could do, so I'll go back here and I'm actually going to um, load up so control O, and I'm gonna load up the diamond example directly. Now you'll see that it's loaded directly. There's this guy right here. If I right click it, we get this set of, I don't know, parentheses around it basically. That means that live reloading is happening. So now if I come back here and we make a change to the code that's controlling this guy, Shadron will automatically evaluate it and update immediately. So this is a really cool tool for interactively handling uh, shader development. You can see and resolve the results almost immediately. Plus, again, you can um, expose parameters simply like so, and it can go one step farther. So let's say a really simple example here, this billboard one, you can see here, oops, arr, it implements a simple billboard in 3D space. Head on back over to the controls. You'll see the option. We can just basically tweak the distance. And we go back to our code. Here is the billboard code. So it's a very simple example. And, and part of how it's made to be simple is through this use of inclusions, which we'll see in a second. But I could change anything here on the fly, but you'll notice I actually have a parameter here for image type texture like that. Well, what I can now do is basically grab that guy and it creates, when I have specified it, but I didn't actually load a texture, it just creates this, this um, window right here for me to drop one in. So let me just bring everything up on my desktop. So grab an image and now it can just basically be dropped in and it will be evaluated on the fly in our example. And if your example actually generates an image, you can have it set so that you can immediately save the results right here or some examples like, for example, I think that diamonds shade run. When this one, you can also, if the end result is an image, you can just drag and drop like I just did right here. And then boom. I think that might have ended up on my other one. Yeah, it did. All right, so bring that back in. So you see the end result spits out right here. It just saved it as an image, like so. And it, you can actually take your parameters into effect. So if I, I updated the glow intensity and the diamond size, it's like so. But I stripped my background down like that, so it's transparent. Now we go ahead and save that out to the desktop. There it is. You see now it is a completely transparent background. So you really can use this tool to generate um, images or pro like your images, you basically you're drawing images using GLSL, and then you can spit them out and use them however you want or save them as your wallpaper or whatever. But again, I think the biggest thing that most people are gonna use this for 
is to learn shader programming. And the cool thing that they've done again is they've it's an extension on top of GLSL and they've made things a little bit easier. So you see here, we've got a bunch of includes. Well, they've added this include in and its ability to basically import uh, some predefined shader on code. And if we go back to the install directory, right here. So this is your root directory for the installation. You'll see there's this library folder, and then there's a bunch of uh, basic examples available, uh, 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 available for you to use. So you see here, like the billboard is right there, and then a fine transforms and math constants. So it's basically like reusable code to build yours upon. So then when you want to use a billboard, you just include in billboard like so, and then you can create a billboard, a model billboard defined that way. And Again, it's just a bunch of usable code that's um, you know available for you to obviously study, but for you to reuse in creating your own thing. So if you need a billboard in your own shader, just pop it in, and then it's a couple lines of code, and you're good to go. Now let's go on back over to the uh, supporting materials. So here is the shader on website. Um, you can see here they've got it split down to so directives are things we saw at the top. Um, these are like pragmas in C sharp or C plus plus. I mean, um, but these are um, things like inclusion that we just saw earlier, how to deal with errors, etc. Sections is, uh, like you see here, these are basically type def areas. So the GLSL is the way of saying everything that follows is GS GLSL. I'm not going to go into a bunch of details over what everything here does, but the ones you might be wanting interest, interested in learning more is export for sure. Once you figure out how to set an export. So if I do like an export ping at the end of my code like this, Actually, let's go ahead and straight up do it. Uh, let's see what shader I currently have. Diamond shader is currently loaded. All right, so I can come back. So if we look now, this guy is doing nothing. So I'm gonna go over to the shader. We're on the diamond shader. Uh, we're not on the, okay, here's the diamond shader right here. So it is generating an image ultimately. There we go. So what I can do is I can bring in this guy and then we'll say diamonds and then for the file name, we will put this to c colon slash slash temp slash slash diamonds out dot png. Let's probably put my quotes in here like so. So save that shader and see now you'll see it enabled this functionality. So once you've got an export defined, you can click that guy. And now if I go to there is the file that was just generated for us. So some pretty cool stuff. These are extensions that are built on top of it. It all is pretty well documented right here. Um, you've got your object section. These are, again, some of the things that are there to make it easier to work with. So if I go ahead and use an image like this, remember we got that image um, pop-up immediately is in incorporated in. And then it basically shows you how to interact with the image. So like right here, if I just take this code right there and I dump it, up here, like so, our example will now have, should have run that on the fly, did it just, there you go. So now we've got an additional input that is shown for us. So using these guys can basically extend and make it so the shade run is accessible to the different resources you have available. And you saw there, there's a bunch of them defined. So there's models, particle systems, sound objects, images, etc. Um, these built-in constants, remember I told you that essentially every, I think I told you this, every uh, GLSL implementation, be it, you know, Shadron or um, Shader Toy, etc., as a host, hooks up to your script by providing it certain parameters or constants or defines. These are the set of built-in constants that Shadron provides. Now, do keep in mind, if you use these, so for example, it's passing into your script the location of the mouse every every round. So you, if you need to pull the mouse, you can use this shadron underscore mouse variable to get the mouse coordinates in your side of your script. Just do be aware, if you start running that script in say Unity or somewhere else, you're either gonna have to replace that functionality or implement it um, on the back end. So that's just one of those things to be aware of. Um, and then here, this library, this is basically just the documentation I was talking about for those things that you can uh, how, pound include in. So this is just a bunch of template code for you to work from. It has been documented. So if you wanna use the billboard, you can see here is an example using a billboard. Um, but this is basically just straight up documentation for all of the code that's available right here. And then finally, there's extensions. Now extensions are available in a couple of ways. If you go to um, the 
uh, GitHub page for this project. There are two extensions already implemented as well as a template for creating your own extensions. But basically what it allows you to use is CRC++ to interface with the Shadron API.h header file and you can extend Shadron. Uh, do be aware there are some catches, especially it must not use OpenGL API except in a separate thread. Um, but other than that, you can basically extend Shadron with C to do whatever it is you want to do. And the two examples they provided, one is animated GIF support. It allows you to um, both use animated GIFs as an import value and as an export parameter. And the other one is integration to the FFmpeg library, allowing you to hook up movies. Um, so you can use Shadron to both import and export FFmpeg compatible movies. So some two pretty cool extensions. Uh, let me see if I get the... Shadron GitHub. Um, yeah, here we go. So here's where the two extensions are available. Uh, I'll toss this link down below as well. So you see there's a Shadron GIF extension and FFmpeg extension. And then to bring those in, you basically make a new folder inside of your install directory for Shadron, create a folder called extensions, and drop the, um, I think these both just generate down to a DLL. So basically just copy the DLL into that folder and you can now use the extensions. You can see how they're implemented available right here. All right, that's it for now. That's, that's Shadron. Uh, I hope you got an idea of what it's useful for. It's a kind of a unique program. Um, but if you're trying to explore, play around with creating shaders, um, it, it might be one of the better options out there. Just do remember to try to confine yourself to GLSL code, or you're going to create a bit of a headache down the road if you're trying to work with a different platform. But it does make certain things easier and more accessible to you. Um, again, the interface is very, very minimalistic. But just if you do buy it, immediately just hit that question mark. Scroll on down here, and you will find the... Um, the instructions for basically how to start doing things. But it's pretty cool, the fact that you can just drag and drop code onto Shadron and have it evaluate it and run it. The fact that you can hook up parameters on the fly, the fact that you can just drag and drop out the, uh, drag and drop out the results and save it to an image. And then there's some pretty advanced stuff you can do here. Like I said, you can create an animated GIF and spit out an, an animated GIF animation. Now the problem there is the documentation does get a bit lacking. You're gonna probably want to go to their YouTube page. Um, they've got a bunch of YouTube videos available I don't have them up here right now. I will link this as well, but basically Shadron YouTube page. Um, he's done a number of different videos available for you. Uh, so you go and head on over here and you will see a bunch of tutorials basically on how to get things up and started. So if you do want to learn more or you want to see a kind of a much more complex example than what I've shown, do be sure to check out this video, uh, these videos anyways, there's some pretty powerful stuff that can be done with Shadron. So that is in a nutshell what Shadron is and does. Obviously I didn't go into a huge amount of depth, but you know, I think we covered the surface. So hopefully it answers your questions you've had about this program. That's it for now, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.